are live, and hopefully we will get through this podcast in one piece. A little behind the <laughs> scenes, we just recorded a podcast, and well, it was an experience. Um, I am your host, Adam Dowd, and joining me as always is co-host Cliff. What's up, Cliff? Hey, I'm uh, feeling really good. I'm crossing my fingers that this will uh, go through without issues, and I'm yeah, I'm doing really well. Hey, I'm it's uh, like uh, 40 degrees out. And I'm in my new studio and I'm not freezing. So this is a this is a, a test for me of the new space. And so far, you know, again, fingers crossed, but no. That's issue. a win. Yeah. <laughs> now, now when you have to bust out your snowblower to get to your shed, that's gonna be a different uh conversation. I have had now, I, have, I have had uh, those thoughts, believe me. I'm just gonna <laughs> I thought like maybe I can just build like a real like a really high sidewalk and then a ramp that just goes down low that i can fall down when it's slippery i don't know i don't know how that's going to work but it's again going to be an experience yeah for sure yeah but speaking of experiences my <laughs> god i have had an ex i've had an experience i've had yeah. a, a, a whole series of experiences uh first of all um we had techtober which very much lived up to its name uh we had a, just a slew of devices launched in and actually like it's a little bit of september too it's a little bit of techtember followed by techtober yeah. it's kind of a two month uh two month thing but i mean i had uh, i had nine reviews to do this month oh my goodness. of which of which i got seven done um, I actually just filed my last one minutes before we got on the podcast today. So technically it's November, but I'm going to give myself credit for eight uh, because I actually technically finished writing it last well, night. Well, you know, I, Techtober has, has it, I, I think Techtober is going to be from now on is, is a misnomer because it's just, it's just, it's bled into September. It, has. Really, it almost starts in August now. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it really has. Uh, and, and actually like I am, remaining just as busy as i was in september through like thanksgiving right. um because I've, I've i've already got like assignments lined up for uh thanksgiving and like an idiot i'm looking to bring on more clients so that's gonna go well there I'm you sure. go it's gonna be uh, great <laughs> but uh but no so like between september and october i flew to new york twice in six days um, we saw the launch of the Pixel 8. We saw the launch of the OnePlus Open, which you know we've which we reviewed on this podcast. And I said it then, I'll say it again. It's my favorite phone of the year. Mm -hmm. Um, we saw uh, God, what else did we? I mean, like, I, I sh should I pull up my freelance calendar and just look <laughs> at <laughs> um, the uh, uh, along, yeah, so along with the OnePlus Open, we got the Oppo find three and the find three flip which i reviewed for pocket tactics um so there was that and the oppo find three is basically just a one plus open with an oppo sticker on it right. or vice versa one of the two the, the uh, regular <laughs> non plus motor razor uh we saw them yeah we saw the regular ra of razor which yeah. i which i reviewed for um slash gear and uh, we had the Pixel Watch, which I reviewed for Forbes. And uh, what else? We're forgetting, we're forgetting something, but, you know. That's, we are that's undoubtedly forgetting. Yeah. Sure yeah think, is so... there anything? Well, let's see. Okay. Well, anyway, I, and wasn't there also, well, that, actually, that might have been like an August thing. I was going to say there was another Wear OS watch that I think you reviewed. But I, that oh, was that a tick one. watch. That was back in May. <laughs> oh, see? It all just yeah. it's all rolling together for me on it, quite honestly. Oh, you know what? I had the venue three. That might be what you're thinking of for Garmin. That's right. So, That's right. Yeah. Um, and then I did a couple of iPhone pieces in September. <laughs> uh, I did a foldables roundup for um slash gear, which I actually had to add on to this month, which I didn't even include in <laughs> the number of pieces that I did, but I it, you know, and it ended up like you know, I wrote this uh, foldables roundup, like every foldable that you can buy in 2023. And I told I, I told my editor at the time, I'm like, you know, there's another two coming out next month. And he's like, well, you could just add, you could just add that on, you know, <laughs> when that comes out. It actually turned out we had another four uh, wow. because because I also did. Uh, and the review I filed today was for the Techno Phantom V flip. Mm. Um so I added that, and I added the Moto, and I added the OnePlus, and I added the Find N3 flip to that so particular. I, I, just so I mean, news. that was like a thousand words right there. <laughs> I just saw news today that uh, the parent company of Techno, which is also Infinix, and I, I, yeah, I, it begins with a T, but they are now the fifth largest 
phone manufacturer or uh yeah phone manufacturer in the world wow good for you yeah Techno. yeah that's well their and parent like, company is that goes really kind of cool because you know kind of a sleeper because they're really kind of pushing the mm -hmm. the low end of the price range when it comes to foldables both the book style and the flip because the flip is only available in india but it's like 49,000 rupees, which translates to about 600 bucks. Yeah. And um, and the Techno Fold, it, I, I want to say it translated to about 1100 bucks. 1100, $1, $1,200, dollars, right? Yeah, yeah, something mm -hmm. in there. So, I mean, yeah, don't don't sleep on Techno. And they do some fun stuff. Like, they do. it's, it's, my it's, favorite a, it's is, an okay phone. Yeah. My favorite is, is definitely actually not one of their foldables. Um, and it's not because it's, I, I would say, in terms of specs and things like that, a, a particularly good uh you know uh, it's not particularly great spec phone but just the the mondrian uh phone that uh one of i think it was techno that released it that uh michael also reviewed um with the color oh, changing back that i thought yeah. was really cool just that was Mon slick. mondrian is 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 one of my favorite uh designers and or artists and okay. he heavily influenced uh stylistically by the stuff that he does it's so simple but mm -hmm. uh anyway so yeah, I, I, I really I, I think that was actually a partnership with uh the what's what's the oh the Museum of Modern Art, uh I believe in, in New York. Momo, Momo, I think it is. Yeah. I think that sounds right. I Momo, that sounds Momo, right. yeah. Mo Momo, Moma, Momo. Something mm -hmm. like that. Museum I don't know. of Modern Whatever. Art. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think Peter mm -hmm. Parker yelled it during uh uh <laughs> during uh in Avengers Infinity War. <laughs> so <laughs> That's oh. all I that's all I really know about it. Um, but yeah, so we had we had a whole slew of devices and like, you know, some of the devices that I reviewed obviously were not new, um, right. but there was just a lot. It was just a lot. And I was I you know, I had every evening of mine, uh, you know, the basically the way I work, I break down my freelance calendar is, you know, I work a normal nine to five. A gig but like every night I, I i basically section off like three to four hours of working on the other stuff that kind of supplements the income that allows me to you know pay my mortgage and whatnot and i had every night accounted for except for the day before halloween halloween and my kid's birthday party and that like every other night was accounted for for wow. you know sitting down and and writing and just yeah it was it was a whole big bag it was a crazy month and like so uh, man it's also it, just 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 as an aside if you guys don't know uh adam now has a scrooge mcduck style money bin in his backyard that he goes I and do. dives into and swims around uh, yeah. You know, th thanks to Techtober. So there is that. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the benefit. Yeah. 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 It's, it, if, you, if you've seen uh, American Made, which just came to Netflix, I watched it with my wife the other night. Uh, there's a scene where uh, Tom Cruise's wife uh, says the dog dug up like one of the money bags in the backyard. And he's like, I'll rake it up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, Techtober uh, is a yeah. thing. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and you are ostensibly through the, the you're through the fire you're on the other side you're yeah yourself off yeah and on, yeah. on to the next thing right yeah i've got uh i've got i've got i've, I've like i said I, I think i'm gonna be pretty much churning through the week of uh thanksgiving but i have nothing booked for that week and i'm, I'm going to try to keep it that way <laughs> so <laughs> we'll, we'll see how that. that goes we'll see how that goes um, but as but, part uh, of techtober yeah. you also uh got to uh you know you said you traveled to new york a couple of times and you also traveled to hawaii tough job tough job you have there i did it was a rough gig it really was a rough gig now i don't want to be i don't want to sound like i'm complaining you know it was <laughs> it was a long trip getting there um you know i had uh two layovers one in denver one in california um although both of those airports had uh virtual caches hidden in them so i was able to add oh. two more states to my map huh. which so, which was kind of nice um but uh and like it was funny at denver i felt like a freaking tennis ball because they kept moving my gate to like one side of the terminal and then the other and it was like there was a moving sidewalk in between the Denver's two gates, a big so airport it, wasn't bad. it is a big airport but it was just like now now boarding that gate e25 or you know <laughs> you're you're 
you will be boarding at gate E25. Oh crap! All right, so blah, 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 blah. zip, and then here I am. Now, now, or now you'll be boarding at gate F13. I'm like, ah, all right. So, oh, I mean, what a, like, what a lovely experience. Yeah, I literally traversed up and down the airport a couple of times because they kept moving my gate. They kept ping ponging my gate back and forth. And finally, I'm just like, you know what? I'm waiting until there's five minutes to board and then I'll go somewhere <laughs> because, you know, anyway. Um, so, yeah, I did that. And then I had like a five hour layover in San Francisco, which was they have a nice airport. I like. Yeah, I, like San I saw Francisco's you saying airport. that. Um, and uh, I, so I spent that time in the uh, United Lounge, uh, which. Uh, which was fun. And I met up with uh, Miriam. Miriam uh, was oh, flying to cool. Hawaii out of SFO. So we were on the same flight. Uh, we were actually in the same row, but I was on, I was on one side of the plane mm. and she was on the other side of the plane. And it was kind of cool because both of us, the middle seat was not occupied. So we were really able to stretch out, huh. um, but we couldn't, we couldn't really talk to each other. We could just, Hey, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, um, and Plus she was uh, probably back, busy. I, busy writing and, and and playing with like eight phones and so she didn't really have much time to talk to you right right well you know nobody has time to talk to me and that's fine um i had john rettinger on my flight back to uh, lax oh. which was fun um he'll be coming on the show soon because i cornered him in the men's room afterwards um, <laughs> as one does as one does um but yeah so it was uh and and like you know in in hawaii once we landed in maui it was it was really like i kind of stacked myself up kind of like how we did at ces at the beginning of the year i just like stacked meetings like back and uh, like back to back to back so i mean it was really i mean it was 12 hour days you know and it was yeah. 12 hour days that started at it wasn't so much the starting it was the ending because like my days were ending at like three o'clock in the morning chicago time <laughs> so like Man, you, you would get to the end and you're like, all right, I'm turning into a pumpkin. I'm going to go. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I kind of figured because I, I didn't hear much from you uh, via telegram when you went uh, when you were there. So I figured yeah. you were super busy. Yeah. And it looked like you at least um, temporarily took part in a, a podcast in which you were in a pool or in a hot tub. <laughs> I was not um, there. The podcast was conducted in a pool. Um, I I was I walked up for like literally three minutes um, okay. because I because I had meetings. Um, so like I walked up and I and I dipped one finger in the water so I could qualify for the pool cast. <laughs> um, that being said, it was pretty cool being part of a pool cast. Uh, yes. So uh, but yeah, so watch for me on the uh, on the uh, mobile tech podcast with Miriam Joar. She had uh uh, Nick Gray, Rich Woods, Michael Fisher, Christian DeLooper, and then me for about five minutes. And uh, um, and then Christian and I actually had to go so to, to the same meeting. You'll have to listen for you or you have to be, I think, a Patreon member in order to see the video version so see, of see the, the video. mobile tech. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. but I'll put a link to that in the, to that yeah. in the uh, in the show notes because it was uh, it was fun. Um, but uh, but yeah, so we learned a lot about. You know, one of the things that I like about going to conferences like this and, and CES and, you know, the briefings and whatnot is you get the uh, you get, I'm always the idiot in the room. Like I'm always the dumb guy in the room and I and that's fine. I built a career off of it. Um, but, you know, you get the opportunity to learn so much about what's going on with, um, you know, with in this particular case. Qualcomm and Snapdragon and you know Snapdragon had the Snapdragon X Elite which is their new PC processor that's coming to market based on ARM. They've got the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 which is their new phone processor which has already I think it's already launched in a it Xiaomi It has phone. actually the Xiaomi phone um, the fort the fort Xiaomi 14. I always want to call it the Mi but they've actually gotten rid of that branding now. Now it's just the yeah, Xiaomi have... 14 and, and Pro, I think. Sure, yeah, Xiaomi 14 Pro, and there was actually a lot of Chinese press there that had the that that were carrying around the phone with them. We're like, oh, can I see that? And I think um, I, I also saw that Honor announced the Magic Six. Is that right? Or said Honor that they were the... said that they were coming out with it. Yeah, the Magic Six Pro. I missed when that's actually going to launch, hmm. but. I think they said Q1, but I'm not positive. So um, again, another another Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 based yeah. phone. So mm -hmm. um, and Honor was also there showing off mm. Snapdragon Seamless, 
which is uh, Qualcomm's protocol for making um, devices work well together and right. you know that's that's more than just headphones and you know like when you first when they first kind of pitch snapdragon seamless um i didn't really understand it like no i mean i did understand it i knew like the concept of it but right. will saddleberg over at uh, android police wrote a great piece about snapdragon seamless and like why it makes sense and like mm -hmm. what qualcomm's doing with it uh so i'll i'll put a link to that in the show notes as well um but uh but honor was there showing off snapdragon seamless where you could have like an honor laptop an honor tablet and an honor phone and in theory this will be interchangeable you know if, right. if you know like, whoever integrates this protocol you'll be able to do this with that i i just the the idea of it is is, is basically to help disconnected ecosystems become connected in order to have a right more integrated seamless experience i.e what apple has because they make everything and everything works well together so whether it's yeah your headphones your pc it all just works together one thing i thought that was really cool and i think this was part of it was or might this might have been another snapdragon um uh or i'm sorry qualcomm um thing was was uh, a new chipset or a new protocol that allows your uh, your true wireless earbuds or I guess just headphones in general to work on Wi-Fi so that you have a lot more extension yes. with that, yes. which I thought was really cool and such a pain yeah. That point. was part of that was part of Snapdragon Sound, and I asked ah. specific I asked specifically like one of the demo people, and I did not get a good answer on this, so maybe I should actually follow up with them again. Um, but you know, because they were mentioning how like with Wi-Fi, you can get like a whole ton more data transmitted and you can do it like, you know, with a, with a greater range. Right. And so I asked I, the question I asked, and maybe I should like not talk about this until I actually get a good answer. But the question I asked is, well, then why would you have Bluetooth at all? Like, it, why wouldn't you just use this micro Wi-Fi deal? Bluetooth is lower power. And is so is better that for battery? That's probably yeah. part of it. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. that was probably part of it. But yeah, anyway, I, like I said, I didn't get a really good answer on I, that. For but. me, well, and, and so the ad, obviously the advantage with with Wi-Fi is is more data throughput outside of the fact mm -hmm. that Wi-Fi just has greater range, right? So if you're yeah. talking about like uh you know higher like higher quality codecs, higher quality audio, then then Wi-Fi also allows you to do that. But I yeah, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just more curious to see how that handoff goes if you're listening to music and then like you go somewhere else. Like, is there going to be like a delay? Like, I can't imagine it would. It's but but anyway, it was pretty seamless uh, because they had a demo of it on on site there that you oh, could okay. like listen to it and they could actually switch back and forth between the protocols That's at will. Cool. Now, hmm. now how that automatic trans uh, yeah. change will go, you know. It's a different well, we're, conversation. We're, but. We're, we are neither radio or audio engineers, so we'll just—it's the end experience that matters, right? Right, right, exactly. Um, but yeah, so the, one of the big focuses, in addition to Snapdragon um, X Elite, which this, mm -hmm. so like previous previous Snapdragon summits have always been about the the Snapdragon Eight, and you know the various processors. This focus was one hundred percent. I'm not not one hundred percent. I mean. But the 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 theme of Snapdragon right. Summit this particular year was all about compute, was all about computing, was all about the Snapdragon X Elite, which is built on this Orion um, core, which came from what was the name of the company? Nubia, Nubia. I believe, a company Nubia. that they purchased in 2021. With, yeah, uh, with uh, engineers that founded it, I believe we were just talking about this before, and it's not like I just have this amazing recall, but from from uh, no. uh, engineers from Apple and Google, uh, as far Google. as uh, right, yeah, and so like basically the people that kind of made the M1 um, all came over to came over to started their they own founded their own Nubia. company. Now I, if I remember then, right, yeah, you know, just in reading articles, obviously I wasn't there, but it was this this architecture was originally uh, focused on uh, for. All right, uh, Google. Thanks, talking thanks, to me for some thanks. Reason. Oh, because thanks, because I, I had the temerity to say Google. Sorry, about that. <laughs> Dick. Anyway, it happens um, all the time. But uh, th that originally the Orion or what has become the Orion architecture w was was geared towards servers. The advantage with ARM processors with their lower power heat requirements and things like that where mm -hmm. servers obviously you know servers generate a lot of a lot of uh that uh, use a lot of use a lot of power and um and generate a lot of heat so arm arm based right servers obviously are, are are advantageous in that respect in terms of their 
um, performance per clock cycle compared to uh, right. because they're a risk based processor versus Cisk, which is uh, x86. So like anything yeah. from Intel and AMD. But I digress. So, yeah, I was really excited this about is, this. this is, by the way, honestly, why you're <laughs> part of this show, because you know this stuff so much better than I do. So anyway, go ahead. Well, <laughs> so, I didn't mean so here's the thing, right? There. So so. Arm, uh, Windows on ARM, ARM for Windows ha has been a thing for a while now, and, oh, yeah. uh, and and has recently transitioned, I think, to 64-bit only, which is a good thing. But right. The problem has has been, quite frankly, that, um, and it it kind of reminds me of of uh, when when uh, Apple went from uh, PowerPC, which was risk uh, risk based processors, over to to Intel, and so you had this. Uh, compatibility layer that everything had to run on top of for older right. software, which mm -hmm. is basically emulation and has a huge performance hit. And 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 yeah. now now there's that so there weren't there just weren't there haven't been a whole lot of uh, native apps for Windows from some of the the big boys right for Windows on ARM you're having to mm -hmm. run it on top of an emulation layer. Finally, that seems to sort of be coming around, and and I think a lot of developers still have to. Like as an example, I use a lot of Adobe apps, and I think now Photoshop and Illustrator have a native Windows on ARM version, but it's still it's still you know I think it's actually there's more for um, uh, Apple hardware, which is also yeah based on ARM, right? For for right. Uh, so this and is something that's it finally seems to be coming to fruition. Uh, for I would Windows. say so. I would say so. Like obviously with with Mac, um, Apple went a whole. <laughs> hard turn you know they right. they were going intel 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 and they're like okay we're we're going this way now and you can either get on or or get right. out and well so, that whole thing was like, was that you know they had been they had they had been dependent on on uh on intel in terms intel. of uh, the, the their product roadmap all that kind of stuff and and kind of mm -hmm. like what what uh in some in some ways what um what qualcomm has done in in terms of purchasing a company that's what apple did actually when they started developing right. their own silicon based first launched with i think it was the a4 uh which was in like the iphone 4 i think 4s something like that but anyway and then that architecture went on and they finally eventually came out with the m1 which was their uh, first uh in-house designed um right processor for uh right excuse me for max and has you know huge it was a was a huge performance leap in terms of um offering comparable or faster performance uh to comparable like in terms of the price and and uh you know where the hardware is positioned to something from uh, computers based on uh intel and or amd and and um and and windows yeah. uh and, and so by the way we're gonna have to kind of fast wrap forward it up here. here. A yeah, bit. yeah, I know. I'm yeah. giving you like that. I'm, I'm, I'm all doing the, the big thing. But anyway, so I have been waiting forever. I love the. I mean, the the advantage of ARM basically is, you know, uh, lower power consumption, longer battery right. life. Right. But uh, there just haven't been processors uh, for Windows that offer that until now, which is what you until saw now. showed off at the Snapdragon yeah. Summit. Sorry, that was a, so, a long, long. It was a long way to get there, but we got there. So, like, and and let's just talk about some of those uh, performance numbers, and then we are going to have to actually wrap things yes. up. But, uh, for example, uh, the M2 Max um, compared to the Qualcomm Orion processor, uh, so basically specifically the Qualcomm called the Elite X, right? That's the name of yeah, the system. Yeah. Or okay. Sorry. Um, it runs. Uh, I mean, they gave. They gave numbers. They gave like benchmarking yeah. numbers. So I'm going to say the Qualcomm Orion was 3,227. It didn't say which benchmark. Uh, against the M2 Max, uh, 2,841 score. Um, so basically it outperforms the M2 Max, but it also uses 30% less power, um, which is kind of huge. Uh, they had a Intel i9 uh, 13980 HX which ran which again the orion outshot the uh the intel and used 70 percent less power um mm -hmm. in terms of gpu they had a uh, ryzen 9 7 9 4 0 hs um and that the uh elite x uh or the x elite sorry i keep saying elite x uh had 80 percent faster gpu performance 
and 80% less power at the same time. Oh, so that's impressive. Yeah. The, the long story short here is that you will get Intel performance even right. under emu emulation. And when I asked uh, Kadar, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, Kondap, I'm going to say, um, who's their, their VP of compute, basically. Uh, when I asked, like, what kind of battery life are we talking about here? And he said, not hours, days. Right. Which is like, you know, that's pretty significant. We just did a review. I'll give you a little snapshot of the review that we just talked about with uh with daniel rubino from windows central where he was saying that the hp specter fold gets uh 10 to 12 hours of battery life right um so like a snapdragon powered computer is going to get two to three days give or yeah, take I, yeah i, I think i think you're on the right track by basically saying so so what does this mean for you as someone who might own one of these in the future right so Mm -hmm. Inst it basically instant on compared to that just a little bit of ramp up that you have with uh intel based or with amd intel. based yeah. computers right way longer battery life uh potentially thinner and lighter laptops uh that have the performance of of something much thicker from uh the you know from, from intel, intel or amd or so, amd oh, i mean it's just all better and really the yeah. bottleneck is just making it is just is just getting more of the developers to get on board with with compiling their apps for windows on arm which right. i think i mean it's been such a small percentage of total pc sales have been arm based computers right, right? that well, it just wasn't worth it i think that's because of the perception that the power wasn't there now yeah. the power is there Exactly. Like, the power is there unquestioningly. Like the, exactly. you know, Intel ran benchmarks in front of us, you know, in front of like every benchmark you can think of CPU mark, geek bench. Uh, there were even benchmarks there that I had never even heard of. And like they're <laughs> all just off the charts. And we right. haven't even talked about AI. We haven't even talked about Qualcomm doubling yep. down on AI. Um, essentially, I'll give you the TL yeah, they've got TLDR the, the version. Really awesome got, NPU, like, right? The thorough processing got, unit that's on board. Yeah, they've got an NPU, which is 98% better than, than last year's. Um, <laughs> so, like, they basically doubled it. Right. But they can also, they Qualcomm will work with PC manufacturers to build in any LLM model that you want. They gave a list of like 30 of them from, you know, Microsoft, mm. from Google, from OpenAI, from Meta. Um, they can put, integrate any of those into the L MPU. LLM so mean, it's just, meaning language learning model, right? Right, right. The large, uh, large, language large learning model. model. Um, yeah. Um, so basically they can put this in there and, and, you know, OEMs can do with it whatever they want. You know, right. they can build an AI tools you can do like they had they were talking about image generation in under point in under one second i think it was 0.53 wow. seconds um from uh from image uh, it was it wasn't dolly it was a different one um but basically you could like put in a text prompt and it'll spit out an image in under a second i mean like this is just crazy stuff and again a lot of what qualcomm was talking about was based in AI. AI. Um yeah. and and you know, oh uh and to be and, fair, and Intel Intel is also very much focused on and you know, on more powerful neural neural processing NPU. units, NPUs on on their I think it's the 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 Meteor Lakes 14 mm -hmm. uh fourteenth generation and forward. So I mean that's that, that's something that's a focus across the board. I mean AI yeah. is is the new thing and it's very yeah. important. And so. uh, in terms of uh, Snapdragon 8, because we're kind of a phone audience, uh, Snapdragon mm. 8 Gen 3, we're looking at like, it, it was like 20 to 20 to 30 percent improvement across all right. all the things, CPU and GPU, and about 10 percent improvement in power consumption. So what they said was, if you're a gamer, you can game about an extra hour on um, mm. a, on a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, which is also pretty cool. Now, now I hate to. Is this going to be on? I, I wanted to ask you. Sorry, I didn't even know. But that the, the is this going to be on a three nanometer manufacturing process, or is it still on four? Not that that's that big of a difference. But I think four. Hang on, I've got it here. Oh, stable diffusion. That's what they were talking about. That okay. was the name of the uh, of yeah, the thing. The Im image um, generation. Yeah. I've got a slide here that I'm looking at. It. I don't see. 
I don't see whether I, 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 I'm pretty I'd sure. Honestly, I, I'm pretty sure it's a four nanometer process. Yeah, I was gonna yeah, say four I, it is for. It's I four, would have been surprised four. if it was because TSMC is the only one that has that right now, and and Apple right. has pretty much purchased all of that production yeah. capacity. Oh, one other one other important note: the uh, Orion processor from the Elite X um, from the X Elite pro, uh, chip in computing is coming to mobile next year. Yeah, I saw that. That Orion, so like, Orion cores. So just imagine having a phone that runs everything like an M2. Right. Like, just think about that. And then, you know, that's, you know. So, you can... so I mean, lar again, like looking at this large picture, this really means that for the first time for what Windows and Android, we're going to have comparable in terms of power to what mm -hmm. Apple offers with theirs, which is, thank God. I mean, right. just across the board, right. we're finally catching up. It's it's going to be really good for all of us uh, when we're purchasing new hardware, and it's and it's also going to be something that eventually is going to benefit, you know, as as they scale those architectures to lower power, you know, less expensive processors, um, less expensive system, much something something that's going to benefit, you know, your your mid range and and less phones and uh, computers. So right. I'm excited. And it's going to be a good thing. <laughs> And then three days later, Apple will launch the M3. Yeah. So that's going to do it for this episode of the podcast. Please consider subscribing to this uh, channel if you'd enjoyed it. And hit that subscribe button. Smash that bell. Drop a like down below. Are you excited about the... Uh, which which is ex more exciting to you? The Snapdragon HN3? The Snapdragon X Elite? Let us know down below in the comments. And if you want some early access, jump on the Patreon at patreon.com slash benefit of the doubt. I would like to thank co-producer Cliff for coming on and uh, talking about Snapdragon with me and for not being at all jealous that I got to go to Maui for four days. But most of all, and as always, I would like to thank you for listening and for giving us the benefit of the doubt.